Hi everyone we hope you are all well, today we have a lovely location for you, we're at Hormond Abbey. Hormond Abbey is a ruined, medieval, Augustinian monastery a few miles from Shrewsbury, England. It was founded in the early 12th century and was closely associated with the Fitzalan family, who became Earls of Arundel, and some of their wealthier vassals and allies. It was a substantial, successful, and wealthy house for most of its four centuries, although evidence of abuses appeared before its dissolution in 1539. The buildings fell into disrepair and the church was largely destroyed, although the remains of some of the domestic buildings remain impressive. The site is now in the care of English heritage and is open to the public. R. W. Eaton, the assiduous Victorian historian of Shropshire, critically considered the cartulary evidence in his 1856 study of the Hormans' origins, pointing out that it was impossible for all the facts asserted to be true, as William Fitzalan is known to have been still a youth in 1138, when he became involved in the anarchy of Stephen's reign. Moreover, of the two bulls concerning the abbey issued by Alexander III in 1172, one does not mention the foundation at all, while the other does attribute it to William Fitzalan but does not give a date. Around the time of the dissolution, the traveller and antiquary Leland repeated the Carchelary's story of the foundation, with the slight variation of placing the date in 1101. A 13th century chronicle, written locally, gives the date as 1110. Eitan seized upon the earliest charter in the Carchelary as giving a fairly secure date. In it, William Fitzalan grants to the community of fishery at Preston Boats, a member of the Manor of Upton Magna, about three kilometers south of the abbey on the River Severn, the first clear indication that the community existed. Fitzalan's grant names the leader of the community as Prior Falk. Augustinian communities were generally counted as priories, although large, entirely independent houses were called abbeys. The grant also mentions that the monastery was dedicated to St. John the Evangelist and this was to persist throughout its history. A statue of St. John with his emblem can be found carved into the arches of the chapter house and his image also appeared on the abbey's great seal. The witnesses were William Fitzalan's wife, Christiana, and his brother, Walter. The grant seems to date from the years around 1135, when Henry I died and a power contest broke out between Stephen and Empress Matilda. However, it is not certain that William Fitzalan founded or was the first to endow the community. Leland repeats the persistent story that there was an hermitage and a chapel before the erecting of the abbey. This suggests some value in considering the founding of the Fitzalan fortunes by William Fitzalan's father, Alan Fitzflad. He appeared in Henry I's company at least as early as September 1101, when he witnessed important grants to Norwich Cathedral. Thereafter, he is heard of with the King at Canterbury in 1103, 
In the New Forest in 1104, he seems to have taken an interest in donations of his own to religious houses, as at some point he gave a manor to Norwich Cathedral, a gift the king promised to confirm when Alan comes to my court, evidently a regular occurrence. Only later does he appear as a witness to an order given to Richard de Belmayi, the Bishop of London and the King's Viceroy in Shropshire, to deal with a disputed prebend at Moorville, presumably a complication of the abolition of the collegiate church there in favour of Shrewsbury Abbey. Allen appears in this context among a group of Shropshire magnates, including Corbett's and a Peveril, probably during Henry I's 1114 military expedition into Wales. It seems to have been around this time that he acquired the Abbey site, along with other large estates in Shropshire and Sussex. The estates had been granted by William the Conqueror to Reynald de Balliol, the Sheriff of Shropshire, in consideration of his shrievalty, and were given to Alan after the death of Reynold's son, Hugh. One of the most important was Upton Magna, in which Hallmond Abbey was located. Item places the handover earlier, around the time of a royal expedition to Shropshire in 1109. It is possible that Alan was the founder of the original priory, or even that it began before his time, as a small eremitic community, towards the end of the 11th century. Another possibility is that the community was established or nurtured by Alan's widow, variously named as Adelina, Avelina or Evelyn, who seems to have survived him by many years. Despite his reservations about the self-contradictory sources, Iten concluded that the foundation date lay between 1130 and 1138 and that the founder of the abbey, in all respects, was the first William Fitzalan. However, William Fitzalan's grant of the Preston Boats Fish Weir, around 1135, was clearly not a foundation grant. There was already a small but growing community when it was made. The Victoria County History account tends to give more weight than item to the possibility of an earlier origin. Augustinian communities often began as small gatherings around a noted hermit before growing into established monasteries, or even small religious orders, the Abbey of Arouez in northern France, which had a Shropshire community at nearby Lillshall Abbey, is an example. At Hormond, the remains of a very modest early church were discovered beneath the floor of the later, more ambitious building. During the 1907 excavations, this may date back to the time of prior folk or earlier. Despite these reservations and qualifications, the most recent account of William Fitzalan, in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, simply treats him as the founder of the Abbey, and it was certainly he who placed it on a secure basis, even if he was not the originator. William Fitzalan took the side of the Empress and was exiled from the region from 1138 until at least 1153. However, endowments continued in Fitzalan's absence. The Empress gave Hormond land and a mill in Walcott, Shropshire. The land grant at least is generally thought to date from Matilda's time at Oxford in the summer of 1141, when she temporarily had the upper hand in the Civil War. The Abbey took the precaution of getting Stephen's approval for these valuable gifts, assuming that Stephen's grant of the same property actually was later, which is not absolutely certain. When Henry, Duke of Normandy, the future Henry II, appeared in England in 1153, he was induced to issue a charter at Leicester, confirming his mother's grants. This strategy of obtaining triple grants during the anarchy was followed also by Lillshall Abbey. An early benefactor of Hormond was Ranulf de Jernan, 4th Earl of Chester, 
who donated the right to fish in the Dee and take 6,000 salt fish free of tolls. Ranulf brought a number of Welsh magnates into the civil war, initially on the Angevin side. This brought gifts of some Welsh churches to the abbey, including that at Trefagoes, in Arwisley, and at that at Nefin, which was donated by Cadwaladra A.P. Gruffid. In 1155, the year after Henry II took the throne, his supporter, William Fitzalan, finally regained his Shropshire estates. William then donated the church at Roxeter to Hormond. This was a portionary church, staffed by a number of canons, dividing the income, but not forming a structured college. Fitzalan stipulated that the abbot must maintain five secular clergy at Roxeter and send five canons to participate in the celebration of the feasts of St. Andrew, St. George, and St. Denis. He also declared he would increase the number of canons at Roxeter, thus benefiting Roxeter and Hormond simultaneously. He declared this was so that they might have a full convent, implying that he intended the church to evolve into a college, probably as a family chantry. If that was his intention, it never materialized. Notably, the donation refers to Abbas de Hagman, the abbot of Hormond, indicating that the house had grown in size and status. As the wealth of the abbey increased, the rebuilding of the church and abbey was begun. Over the next 20 years it was constructed in a late Romanesque style, funded mainly by the Fitzalans and their vassals, especially the Lestrange family. However, there were royal donations, including assarts around the abbey site, which were granted by an early charter of Henry II. These signaled that the abbey was closely associated politically with the Angevin dynasty. This was reinforced by the appointment of Eliord, the king's former tutor, as abbot, probably in the 1160s. It was Eliord who in 1172 obtained two bulls from Pope Alexander III, confirming the early grants, giving the abbey extraparochial status, including the right to bury whoever willed it, and conferring on the canons the right to elect their own abbot. The king added still more charters when he was at Shrewsbury later in his reign, probably in 1176, updating the list of endowments conferred upon the abbey by that time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video.
Thank you all for watching, feel free to leave a comment, like and subscribe to keep updated with new content, see you in the next one.